Let's talk about the determinants of supply or in other words, what are the factors that affect supply? Well, we divide factors that affect supply in two sort of big categories. The one is what we call a uh, price factor, which is a very important one. And the second one, big category is what we call non price factors. Just like demand theory, the price factor will be resulting in a what we call a movement along the supply curve. So something like this, any change in price will result in a movement along the supply curve. While the non price factors will result in what we call a shift of the supply curve. So when we look at uh, the movement around the supply curve, so we know this that if there is a change in price, this will result in a change in quantity supplied. We've been discussing this that that if you draw a supply curve, whenever there's a change in price, you will see a change in quantity supplied, which means we are moving from one point on the supply curve to another point on the supply curve. So this is what we call a change in quantity supplied. But whenever there is a change in the non price factor, you will see the supply curve to actually end up shifting to the right or to the left. So if I just make this diagram one more time, and let me also label it properly, this is price and, and quantity. So if I want to show you guys the non price factor, the non price factors will result in the supply curve to shift either to the right, which is called a rise in supply or to the left, which is called a decrease in supply. So look at this guys that if the price is P1 and let me zoom this diagram. If the price is P1, if the price is P1 and if you look at the quantity for the same price of P1, a factor which is a non price factor can make the supply curve shift to the right. But for the same price P1, there could be a non price factor that can result in supply to fall. Like for example, to for example, this quantity, okay, which means that when the price remains constant, and yet the quantity produced is going up, they could be what we call a non price factor playing a role. So when I go from S naught to S one, I can say there is a rise in supply. While when I go from S naught to, for example, S two, we can say there's a fall in supply. So what are the factors that can result in what we call a shift of supply curve, which is a non price factor? Um, let's discuss that. We know this that if ever there's a change in price, there will be a movement along the supply curve. And so now we need to look at what are the factors that can shift the supply curve or what are the factors that can increase or decrease the supply of curve. The first factor which can result in supply curve to shift uh, is the cost of production. We know firms are aiming to maximize profits and anytime there is a change in cost of production, it can result in the profitability of firms to go down or go up. And if there is a change in profitability, of course, there will be a change in willingness to produce a good. So what are the factors that can make the cost of production to change? Well, the first one could be your input prices. What are inputs? We discussed that earlier. Inputs are your land, labor, capital, and of course, enterprise. These are the inter, uh, inputs that are required for the production. So anytime there's a change in, for example, wage, or if there's a change in rent, or if there's a change in interest, that can result in cost of production to change. So for example, let's assume that the rent goes up. A rise in rent would mean cost of production will go up. And this rise in cost of production would mean firms are willing to supply, willing to supply less at each and every price. Now, this means that if I draw my supply curve for this situation, you know, your supply curve will be 
shifting backward. So if this is my original supply curve, let's call it S0, my supply curve will be will be shifting backward, like for example, S1, because the cost of production has gone up. So for a particular price, let's use like P0, if you were making Q0 before, your willingness to produce has gone down to Q1 as the cost of production has gone up. Important way to look at this is figuring out, you know, like how much is your change in cost. So this diagram actually can also help us explain the change in cost. If I want to show the change in cost per unit, I can only, I can do that by looking at the vertical distance AB. So this vertical distance AB tells me what is what my change in cost is. For example, let's say at uh, sort of uh, price of P1, I was making Q1 quantity before when the supply curve was S0. And because of the rise in cost of production, let's say my supply curve went to S1, and now I'm making same Q1 at a higher price of P0. So this price, let's say, was $5. And let's say this one is, let's say, $7. So this means that my change in cost per unit is actually going to be two dollars and how did i figure that out this vertical distance between the two supply curves tells us the change in cost per unit because for the same quantity we previously i was accepting a price of five dollars now for the same quantity i'm accepting a price of seven dollars so keeping everything else constant this means my change in cost is two dollar per unit so while the vertical distance tells us the change in cost uh, for each and every quantity. The horizontal distance is telling us the change in quantity for each and every price. Another important factor that can change our uh, costs of production in the long run is technology and, and technology changes can be shown through, through shifts of supply curve because let's say if this was your supply curve before and I said to you that there is an improvement in technology. This improvement in technology results in uh, the cost of production to actually go down. So any improvement in technology results in the cost of production to fall, which will result in supply curve to rise. So another factor that can cause our supply curve to shift to the right or for the cost to lower at each and every quantity is are changes in technology. Any improvement in technology can make the supply curve shift to the right, while any decrease in technology or any any anything that affects our technology in a negative manner can make the cost of production to go up, and therefore the supply curve to shift to the left. So the second factor that can affect our cost of production um, independently is technology. The third factor we would like to talk about, which can also affect our cost of production, is changes in productivity. When I say changes in productivity, changes in productivity means productivity of all factors of production. So for example, if I am producing uh, goods in a farm and the farm productivity go up because of better technology or because of better machinery or because of better labor productivity or because of better pesticides or insecticides or any technology that I'm using, that changes in productivity can also make my cost to change. So for example, if there is a rise in productivity, better productivity of workers would mean the cost of production will fall because the, the worker or the machinery or the inputs are making me a greater output for the same cost. So cost per unit will fall and that cost of production to fall means supply to rise. So any improvement in technology can result in supply curve to shift to the right. Another important factor that we would like to discuss is uh, changes in the price of related goods. When we look at related goods, uh, we're looking at two kinds of goods. So it could be what we call uh, joint supply or competitive supply. What do we mean by joint supply? Well, joint supply simply means when two goods are jointly supplied, supplied, they must be what we call a byproduct 
for example when you produce more honey bees wax automatically comes as a byproduct so in other words higher supply of honey when the supply of honey goes up means higher production of or supply of beeswax let's so i'm going to draw first the market for uh, honey and um, at the same time i'm going to look at market for beeswax so if this is my supply curve for honey um, and uh, let's assume that for some reason people are consuming more honey so the production of honey is going up maybe because of higher demand so higher production of honey means that automatically beeswax which is a byproduct of it will be produced and the supply curve for for the for the beeswax industry this is your beeswax industry will see a shift to the right and this is an independent factor guys which is making this supply curve to shift and not a dependent factor in the sense that it was not because of cost of production or any reason that the supply has gone to the right but because you are producing more honey automatically higher bee beeswax is produced similar to this idea is the idea of competitive supply so what is competitive supply when when two goods are in competitive supply this means that they are kind of like in competition to each other in terms of input so for example let's say if i'm a farmer who can produce uh, oranges and lemon which is by the way from the same citrus family uh, so i can produce oranges and lemon uh, in my land and let's say i decided you know what i'm going to produce more of oranges that would mean that probably i'm going to get more profits from oranges so let's say this is my supply curve for oranges and for some reason i am encouraged to produce more maybe i believe that there is a better price and better demand and so i am producing more of oranges so the or the quantity supplied of oranges is going up but that would mean i have less of land available for for lemon so while i am producing more of oranges the supply of lemons from the market will go down and why is that so the supply curve will shift backward because now for each and every price there is less of lemons produced because there are less of lemons available in the less of land available to grow uh, lemons now so this is kind of like in a competitive supply that when the production of one good can lead to less production of the other because the inputs that are being used are are used for one uh, thing and not for the other another factor guys that can make the supply curve shift to the right is number of firms a lot of times number of firms can go up in an industry so industries that are profitable will see entry of new firms and that entry of new firms can make the supply curve shift to the right for all uh, the industry so entry of new firms can make the supply curve rise and this entry of new firms mainly happen when an industry is profitable because profitable industries will encourage new firms to enter and that would mean supply curve will shift to the right for the industry for that good so a good example of this is that uh, many a level schools have opened recently uh, and that has resulted in the supply of schools in the market for a level education has gone up because of entry of new schools in the market exogenous factors also play a role when it comes to when it comes to increasing or decreasing supply what are exogenous factors exogenous factors are factors that are independent or do not depend on the production process for example in production we know this if there is for example uh, example floods or a heat wave or a drought 
all of those could if, if affect our farming productivity and all of this can affect our farming supply. Similarly, a major accident or a terrorist act or a war may affect the supply of, for example, many goods like, for example, oil. And so exogenous factors are independent factors which can also affect supply and can shift supply curve to the right or to the left. A, a good example of this would be, you know, like good weather can result in higher supply of agricultural goods. So you could have a bumper crop, a good crop, because an external factor like, for example, um, for example, uh, good weather is causing the uh, supply to rise. Lastly, guys, government policies also play a role. What are government policies? Well, government policies can be looked into two ways. Number one is the policies of taxes. And we will have a longer discussion later on. And there's also policies of subsidies. What are taxes? Taxes are basically, you know, like I'm, and I'm talking about indirect taxes mainly because direct taxes are on income. Indirect taxes are taxes on expenditure. And whenever we put an indirect tax, we put an indirect tax on a producer. And what that does is basically that results in the cost per unit to go up. So let's see this in terms of a diagram. So let's assume that the tax that the government put on a good is, let's say, $2 per unit. And the government can put taxes for many reasons. They may want to do this for discouraging production of a particular good. They may do it for uh, raising revenue or any other reason that they want to sort of put a tax on. But whatever the reason is, let's say the government decides to put a tax. So if my supply curve is, for example, S0, and currently, let's say, for 10 units, the, the firm is charging, let's say, $5, when we put a tax of $2 per unit, the cost per unit will go up by $2. So something which was made for $5 per unit will now be made for $7, which would mean the supply curve will shift to the left by $2. And this vertical distance AB is telling us this change in cost per unit which is of two dollars and which is happening because now this is after tax supply curve so whenever we put a supply uh, whenever we put a tax on a good the supply curve will shift backward on the other hand whenever we give a subsidy which what is subsidy when well, subsidy is simply um, government sort of uh, grant to encourage production of a good and we give this grant to basically lower the cost of production. So it's a kind of like opposite to, to taxes, while taxes are making the cost per unit to go up. Subsidies by government are trying to sort of encourage production of something, like for example, vaccine. You may want to sort of subsidize vaccine. So, so that subsidy will result in the cost of production to go down. So let's say the subsidy is uh, $2 as well. And let's say previously I was charging $10 per unit and I was making uh, 20 units now with the subsidy of two dollars supply curve will shift to the right and this vertical distance a b is telling us that this is the reduction in cost because of subsidy because now the cost will be eight dollars for the same 20 units uh, and this is by the way eight dollars per unit so your supply curve s1 will be after subsidy so while taxes can make the supply curve shift backward, subsidies, which are grants by the government for the production of goods like vaccine could result in supply curve to shift to the right.